So it is my pleasure this morning to welcome uh, Dr. Wayne Anderson, who is Director of Food Science and Standards at the Food Safety Authority of Ireland. So thank you very much for joining us this morning, and we're really looking forward to, to hearing you talk. So Wayne joined the FSAI in 1999 from the food industry and is now the Director of Food Science and Standards and has respond overall responsibility on food safety risk assessment and regulatory science. He's an adjunct professor with us here in, in UCD. He started as a, a primary degree in, in biochemistry and a PhD in predictive food microbiology. He sits on many committees, um, some of which are the you know, Expert Advisory Committee for Microbiology and Safety of Food. He's worked with the FHO and WHO on several expert consultations. And he is a member of the International Commission of Microbiological Specifications for Food and a fellow of the Institute of Food Science and Technology of Ireland and also the Food Science and Technology in UK. So we're very grateful for Wayne to join us this morning. And really what he's going to talk about is the um, prioritization and reporting of food safety competent authority research needs. So what is important in terms of research and food safety for the FSAI? So we look forward to to hearing from him just a couple of housekeeping we will do questions at the end so if you have any questions we can chat at the end but if you'd like to put them into the chat option throughout that we can come back to them at the end of the talk and we'll ask everybody to just turn off their uh, cameras and microphones during the talk and we'll uh, turn them all back on again at the end when we do the questions so thanks very much Wayne I'll hand over to you now. Okay thanks Eileen can you hear me okay? We can indeed, yeah. Perfect. Thanks, okay, then right, we'll kick off. Well, thanks everybody for uh, coming and joining me on this uh, on this talk. We'll uh, try and get through this in, in good time so you can ask questions if you're necessary and uh, hopefully you'll get some interesting information out of it. Obviously, uh, Research Bites, it was hard for me to find a topic to talk about since I don't do research these days very often. So uh, I thought this one was probably something you might be interested in uh, and uh, we'll see at least uh, whether you get any information out of it. So I'm going to talk about identifying and prioritizing reporting food safety competent authority research needs. And this is really about like where does your research go? Who uses it? Why Why do we need it? And that's the sort of thing I'm going to try and cover off today. So if I can get the transitions working here, let's have a look. Okay, dokie, okay, there we go. Hopefully that's moved along. So I walked around for a bit and end up with Matt Orlando, who runs a mass. Got a little bit of interference there on the line, if everyone can mute themselves, please. That's great. Thanks very much. OK, then. So um, we do have a science strategy. Uh, we have a main uh, corporate strategy in FSCI. And for those who don't know what we do, essentially, we're enforcing the food law in Ireland. So we're responsible for enforcing all the food law in all of the different food businesses in Ireland. But obviously, to do that, uh, we need to be able to uh, understand the science behind uh, food safety. We need to be able to do risk assessment and we need to be able to produce um, guides to best practice and how you might manage food safety issues. So these are the sort of things we use science for, uh, and that's really important for us because without the research and the, and the work that uh, you guys do in UCD and other places, we really would have uh, big gaps in our knowledge. And this is uh, partly what we're gonna try and talk about, which is uh, identifying those gaps and trying to decide which ones are the most important for us and uh, what we might do to try and fill those gaps. And that's a bit more tricky than you might suppose. So the science strategy we have in FSCI, this is up on our web if you wanna have a look at it. Uh, but one of the main uh, parts of it, you can see there, there are four goals, but one of them is very much about continuing to develop the evidence base and improve the use of data. So this is for us is the bit where the research side of things fits in. Now, the first thing is to say that uh, in the FSCI, um, for those of you who work well with us know this, is that we have a number of, of chief specialists and, and uh, managers leading out on several areas in, the, in my division, which is the uh, food science and standards. Um, We've got the Public Health Nutrition Unit and Claire Donovan is in, involved with that. Uh, Biological Safety, Lisa O'Connor is also lectures uh, to some of your courses here in UCD. Pat Amani, uh, former, formerly of UCD and uh, has a lot of connections in. 
um, um, chemical safety unit with EMA and Christina. And then uh, we have the uh, new reformulation task force, which uh, Nula's uh, leading out on. Now, all of these people, their job is to be on top of their own topic in terms of food safety. So their job is to be connected in with other people around the world to understand where the gaps are, to carry out risk assessment and, and research needs, etc. So that's their job. And we rely heavily on these people to do that work within the FACI. So that's one of the th one of the things that we use for identifying research needs, very much the, the connections that these people have around the world. Then we have the scientific committee and uh, Dolores is on the scientific committee along with a number of other people. Um, and we, these are the scientific committees over the year. You might, uh, Eileen, you might recognize uh, Mike there in the middle. And then we've had Alan and Riley. So there's a few really old uh, pictures of uh, people around here that I'm sure they'd prefer if I uh, didn't show them, but anyway. Um, the scientific committee is 15 members that are appointed by the minister to advise the Food Safety Authority on matters to do with uh, food safety, uh, nutrition and science. And the one thing that's really good about this group is that they provide us with scientific opinions and reports. And you may or may not know of the different reports that these produce. There's just a handful there that, uh, that have been done over the years. These are all up on our website if anyone's interested in them. The other good thing about them, though, is that they can they carry what we try to do is is encourage the committee to identify the gaps uh, in the information that they have. So areas where there's uncertainty, they may not be able to fill. What are the gaps and what are the research that might be useful in those areas? So many of these reports where appropriate would have these uh, recommendations and a research recommendation at the end. So that's another source of information on what research needs to be done to, to reduce uncertainty and filling gaps in the evidence base for food safety. So we use those quite a lot. The other thing is as well for prioritization, because it's all right identifying all of these research needs, but what, you know, which one do you do you put your money on? Which one do you focus on first? So sometimes we're using, you know, if it was microbiological zoonotic issues, then we would be using uh, some of the uh, incidence data uh, along with the knowledge of what research has been done out there to decide, well, actually, you know, it might be better to carry out some research on reducing Campylobacter than it would be to do uh, work on brucellosis, for instance. Um, so that's that's really one of the areas we're running at and, and we're currently working in the scientific committee on a risk ranking for biological safety um, activities, which is taking a little bit longer than we hoped, but some of you are involved. And effectively um, what we'll have there is is a, a better ranking of these risks that we don't just have to use the, the incidence data for, it'll be based on far more than that. And that'll give us an idea on where we should be uh, focusing our time. We've already done that for risk uh, ranking in chemical contaminants, uh, that, that work's published, and we're currently applying that uh, approach to our chemical contaminants uh, monitoring programs under official controls where we go out and test food. Uh, and you'll see there, there's a risk-based approach for developing national residue sampling plan. And this is, again, we use that risk-based approach to try and advise the Department of Agriculture on its residue program. And then the other issue is the food incidents. Uh, as you know, in, in Europe, the, we have to um, notify food incidents between countries under the RASF system, the Rapid Alert Food and Feed system. We also have our own internal food incidents. These are some of the data that you can see there for 2022. Um, and there's a lot of incidents, if you, that's the first thing to notice, there's a hell of a lot of incidents that go on, and they're in chemical and biological safety. We have an algorithm that was developed, and I'll, I'll, I'll show you that later, that we apply to this to look at the areas where we're getting the biggest hit on uh, issues, and we can sometimes use that. If we see issues to do with particular chemical contaminants, we might feel we need to put out uh, compliance documents on those and best practice documents in order to, uh, to help them, or if we don't know the data in terms of risk assessment, we might need research needs on those. So food incidents are also a big uh, area where we use uh, information for prioritizing research needs. The other one, as I say, with us, uh, chief specialists and myself as well, you know, is using these uh, these networks. Um, 
up there at the top, I don't know whether you can see my point of is, uh, is the ICMSF. It was mentioned in my uh, biography. They're a group of international microbiologists uh, who uh, identify or set specifications in FUSE micro criteria. This group here is the, um, is the advisory forum for EFSA, where every member state is represented. These are all the risk assessors uh, for, for the member states. And we have, our, honestly, our, our scientific committee. But these, these are the people, these are the networks where we're often Often uh, amongst the network is a discussion of, you know, where the gaps and where are the uh, the problems in terms of being able to solve issues to do with food safety, and all of these connections we have are where we bring the ideas into our own work in terms of what we need. So that's another important part. But there are barriers for the Food Safety Authority, and uh, people possibly don't realise this. Some of you working closely with us will, but not everybody. Um, for a start off, we don't have any labs. Um, the labs in uh, work are under service contract to the FSCI. Uh, and so the back Western labs uh, shown there obviously would be uh, part of the Department of Agriculture and Food. State lab there is under the under DEPRA. And then uh, the uh, public analyst lab in Dublin there is under the HSE. So we don't have any labs working directly for us. Uh, these are all under contract and do all of the official controls testing. So we don't have any labs. We're not able to do research in that respect. The other thing is, is the uh, section one of the HEA Act uh, 1971 lists all of the organizations which are considered to be uh, research performing organizations and, and we're not one of them. So uh, we're not a research performing organization. And that means that we can't apply for funding to do research, even if we had the capacity to do that research. So that's another barrier we have. The other uh, point, and um, this was at the time of uh, Pat Wall's uh, tenure in the FSCI as CEO, I know he's on the call, um, then effectively we have um, the situation where safe food was set up under the uh, uh, British Irish agreement and the British Irish agreement was uh, where certain activities under under food safety was were jointly sorted out across the two uh, two jurisdictions so whilst the FSCI was set up in 2009 uh, sorry 1999 and just before that with the Food Safety Authority Act in 98 um, we did have research and still do have research mentioned in the Food Safety Authority Act but uh, then along came uh, Safe Food, uh, who Food Safety Promotion Board is their formal title. Uh, they were established at the end of 2099, and uh, they have research in their uh, needs as well. And uh, that research is for both jurisdictions. But the big issue, I suppose, is that the research budget, uh, although it's in our act, the research budget went from FSCI over to uh, Safe Food. So now Safe Food are supposed to be the body that does all of the uh, food safety research. And we don't have, uh, we're not provided with money from the Department of Health, is our uh, reporting department, for any kind of research activity. If we do have money, it's very uh, small amounts of money and it would probably come out of our operational budget to do very small focus studies. So that's the, that's the situation that makes it very difficult for FSCI to fund research, which is why we're not, and I keep saying this to lots of people, we are not a research funder. So there's no point coming to us with lots of ideas about research because we actually can't fund them. So what we have to do is be box clever and we have to try and influence other people who fund research to do the food research that we need. So uh, this is how we, uh, we we get involved and excuse me for the uh, spelling mistake there at the top of the slide. So the quality of proposals that I should read. So first off is I spend a, quite a bit of time contributing to research strategies, uh, particularly in the Department of Agriculture and the uh, Environmental Protection Agency. Uh, these documents, if, if you can't influence those in terms of ensuring that they cover food safety, then when you try and do the research calls, they don't fit into the strategy and they don't get picked up. So the first thing is to influence those strategy documents. And there's always public consultations and workshops and everything else about these strategies. Uh, it takes a lot of time, a lot of involvement, but ultimately, if you don't do it, you don't get. The other point then is the next level down, which is contribution to the research call. So uh, DAFM, uh, the firm, we've contributed many years to that. Safe Food contributing ideas to their research, and also the EPA. More recently, we've been involved in contribute to their research calls. So this is where uh, we'll be invited 
uh, or there'll be a public consultation to put in uh, issues that um, government departments are interested in. And I generally will uh, knock up a, a list of uh, research priorities that we would like to see and send those off. Now, we have got no control over whether those are picked up or not by the different uh, bodies. Um, we've reasonably got a good record with the Department of Agriculture and Safe Food. So sometimes it's about uh, talking to people and making sure that uh, they understand the background to these. But that's that's what we do. You can see an example of the sort of thing I would send off to the Department of Agriculture there. And we've also per periodically done joint research work with Safe Food in particular. Uh, for example, that one shown there where, you know, we might do monitoring through our official controls and our uh, official laboratories. Um, but they would do some, maybe a complementary thing with it, uh, some research, social research, maybe surveys or whatever to complement what we've found microbiologically. And that, that in its totality gives us an idea of where we might put our, uh, uh, invest our efforts in trying to maybe uh, improve consumer understanding or improve uh, industry understanding. The other side of it is then once uh, things are in research calls, our scientists, uh, the, the people I showed you there up on the board earlier, uh, they get involved in uh, evaluating research projects as well. Um, we've been, we're always involved in the Department of Agriculture projects in many different uh, uh, reviews. The Environmental Protection Agency, usually if there's a food safety one coming in and out of there, we'll do those. Enterprise Island, we've been asked to do similarly, uh, particularly in the area of novel foods and uh, novel technologies. And safe food, obviously, from time to time, uh, would ask us to do that sort of work for them. This is where we can ensure that the, the proposals that are going in are doing two things one is is taking into account the food safety aspects of what should be done uh sometimes they're forgotten in the in the interests of finding out if a particular technology works for instance the other angle is to ensure that the particular piece of research actually takes account of the legislation because there's a lot of research done but the often the barriers in legislation to adopting that uh, research and making it into something useful, a product or a process uh, are not taken into account. So we try and make sure that, uh, you know, in any comments we're feeding back, we're trying to make sure those things are, uh, are taken into account on the proposals to improve the proposals. And very often the proposals are coming in are really, really good. Um, and it's really a matter of uh, putting the icing on the cake. So that's important for us. And You'll know on Friday that uh, the Department of Agriculture released their uh, latest firm call um, and uh, it's I don't know why their website is actually a call specification 2021 final because it's actually the 2023 but anyway. Um, the deadlines are quite tight on that you can see, but in terms of our submission and what we what got picked up in this you'll see that uh, our ideas on food safety culture were picked up as a uh, as a specific project so was the food safety of fresh fruit and vegetables our ideas in terms of uh, water and the contribution of the environment to the safety of these uh, these foodstuffs was picked up in a more broad uh, project on that uh, our reformulation came in as a theme uh, alternatives and blended protein sources was a theme our our issue was very much about the safety of these uh, these new protein sources. Uh, nutrition databases as a theme for us, it's very much about making sure these are comprehensive so we can use them for exposure assessment within the FSEI. So that's another theme. And then I noticed that vulnerability assessments were there um, on the food fraud and uh, angle. And actually that was a theme from the last time I made a submission into them rather than this time, but it's nice to see it picked up anyway. So I'm pleased that you know, what we're putting in is getting picked up and then we'll see what proposals come in, if any, on these angles. So there's two variables here. One, do they get picked up? And two, do they attract any proposals and are those proposals of any uh, value or any quality? And that's really uh, the vagaries of all of this. But then when projects do get uh, funded, um, we are often, and this is really nice and great from the research community's point of view, uh, asked to Im involve ourselves with the steering groups of these projects. So these are a few that we're on at the moment, um, some of them finishing off uh, at the end of last year, some of them ongoing now. And it's great to be on these because then we can feed in, uh, you know, the legislative uh, point of view. The It's like feeling from the customer, the end user. So I think it's really, really valuable to have those as well. The other ways we get research done, this was a nice thing from SFI, public service fellowships, where we had um, funded through SFI, we had uh, two researchers working with us for a year. 
and it was great. We got fabulous work uh, done by these two guys, uh, Kevin and, uh, and Mary. Mary helping us on probiotics. So she comes from the APC, and Kevin was working with us on many projects, mostly to do with uh, data and emerging risks identification and data analysis. And it was Kevin uh, who did some of the algorithms that we use now for looking at our uh, food um, incident data. So this is really, really good as well. So we can do a little bit of research ourselves, but we have to be using all the people's funding to do it. In this case, SFI paid for this. Um, we're now uh, part of a research project, uh, Food Safe R. This is in Europe. Where these days, because of the change to arise in Europe, where they're asking food safety authorities to be particularly involved, we're getting lots of applications for us to join things, but we just don't have the capacity to do it. We don't have the number of scientists, and as I say, we don't have the research labs if necessary to do work. So we we often have to turn these down, unfortunately. But we do we have got involved in this one because it's developing tools for emerging risks for risk managers, and we think this will be really useful and our particular part of it is very small uh, in terms of organizing international workshops with food agencies so that we can get the tool working and up and running but um, yeah it, it'd be nice if we could do more of this but we don't a don't have the researchers and the capacity to do it because we're doing other things and b you know it's uh, it, it's a lot big commitment uh, also in terms of administration and bureaucracy which we actually don't have the uh, people to administer that. We don't have research offices that help us with this kind of stuff. So we're a synthesizer of information really, rather than a, uh, a producer of information. And, you know, the scientific committee reports, best practice documents and uh, studies, small studies uh, in terms of contaminants in food and that kind of stuff we, we can do, but it's, uh, it is very limited. So we are really, really reliant on all of the other funders to fund the larger pieces of research. And what we try and do is every year uh, we produce this document which started recently. Um, this is the 2022 document. I'm just finalizing off on the 2023 document. And here is the document we put up on our website and you can look at all our research needs and what's uh, what's what we'd like to see done uh, and inform us also. This last column is really important if, if there's projects going on in the areas that we've listed to actually inform us of them so that we can uh, we can put them down and take them into account. So 2023s will be coming out fairly soon and uh, hopefully people can use that as, uh, as part of the backup for their research proposal. But we would love people to pick this up and, and make proposals to funding organizations, not ourselves. Uh, and we're happy enough to talk through what we think of the needs in those areas with any of the researchers who contact us. So that document's quite important. So that really brings me to the end of the presentation. It was only short, but uh, hopefully it's given you a, a feeling for uh, for where we sit in funding and, and the sort of things that we're interested in. Eileen.